In this module, we continue to discuss basic probability and statistics in the context of manufacturing measurement applications. The key concept is that data from repeated measurements usually vary. Distributions of that variation can be modeled and used to estimate the probability of measurements and our confidence that measurements will occur over a specific range. Let's first take a look at a prosthetic limb during developmental testing. This will motivate an industry application we'll discuss in the slides that follow. The video shows how a motorized prosthetic limb is controlled myoelectrically through EMG sensors. It shows promising capability over a range of locomotive functions while done by a person with a transfemoral amputation. It also shows testing for people without an amputation. This device, called a robo-crutch, has promised to help rehabilitate people recovering from lower body injuries. But the manufacturing fabrication process needs some statistical analysis of a key issue. Let's imagine we're a medical device company that seeks to manufacture this robo crutch, potentially for lower extremity rehabilitation. As we can see in the video, the prototype device was initially researched by engineering students as an actively controlled prosthetic limb. The design drawing is shown on the right. The device contains a novel EMG controlled knee joint with a compact ball screw shown at the top right and a DC motor. It's capable of power requisite tasks, such as walking up slopes, standing up, squatting, and even walking upstairs. Now, preliminary tests of the product were successful. However, as you probably could hear in the video, customer surveys indicated that the device is simply too loud for practical use. If a manufacturing engineer can reduce ball screw bearing noise during the assembly process, we may be able to take the product to production. So an obvious place to investigate noise is in the ball bearings. During a key step in the robo crutch assembly process, many small bearings are tightly packed around the ball screw within a ball nut assembly. Unusually high variation in ball bearing geometry could be the source of noise. Consider inspecting a large vendor supplied box containing a population of thousands of similarly sized small round bearings. In considering bearing noise, we might seek to better understand the size of the bearings and more importantly, variation in size. But it's not practical to measure all of the bearings, so we might measure two dozen from the thousands in the box. This sample of diameter measurements forms a data set, which we use to infer information about the entire population of bearings in the box such as the average diameter and its variance. In statistics, the population is, of course, all possible values of a measured variable. Sometimes a population is countable, knowable, or even known. But often, the actual population is practically not known or knowable. Imagine fish in a lake. The only way to measure the population is to drain the lake, and that's definitely not a good idea. In the case of a box of bearings, the manufacturer might not even know the exact number of bearings in the box if they pack it by weight. In statistics, sampling is the process of obtaining data through repeated measurements of a variable, preferably under fixed operating conditions. Drawing a dozen bearings from the box is, of course, sampling. But imagine if smaller bearings settle in a box like this. We must be careful to ensure the sampling process selects representative samples from the population without bias. In statistics, the sample is simply the subset of values taken from the population, and the measure and is the name for the variable being measured. In this case, the ball diameter is the measure and.
We make measurements that we use to infer things about the measured variable. The core question is how close are the measurements taken from the small data set at estimating the actual size and variation of all the bearings. Also, if we selected a different set of 24 bearings, would we expect the same values? What is the average or mean based on the finite sample? And how well does this represent the entire population? More importantly, do variations found ensure we meet tolerances for the population as a whole? And how good are these results? These questions have their answers in probability and statistics. What are our goals in this type of analysis? Of course, we want to reduce noise, but when it comes to analysis of our sample bearings, we more generally want to be able to quantify, one, a single representative value that best characterizes the average of the measured data, the average diameter of the 24 sample bearings. Two, we want a representative value that provides a measure of the variation in the measured data set, perhaps the standard deviation, or even the range of diameters. And lastly, we want to know how well the average of the data set represents the true average of the entire population of the measured variable. The value of 1 can vary with repeated data sets, so the difference between it and the true average value of the population is a type of random error. Three requires establishing an interval within which the true average value of the population is expected to lie. The interval quantifies the probable range of this random error and it's called random uncertainty. If we want to reach those goals, we need to look more closely at an individual measurement. It's helpful in statistical measurement applications to introduce the notion of a true value, the exact value of a variable. While it is possible that the measured value is the true value, practical limitations often introduce errors, which are the difference between measured and true values. Error sources are diverse. Just to mention a few, errors can be rooted in instrument accuracy, calibration error, human error, 
data acquisition issues, process variation or changes over time or temperature, or just natural variation. Even the most accurate measurement instruments with the smallest of resolutions have some real-world limits to their accuracy. And physically, a part like a bearing does in fact have some true size. Simple counting operations like output, yield, or backlog, they might not have error for reliable systems. But measurements of physical or process variables, size, pressure, temperature, force, flow rates, speeds, and key operating variables like time and cost are likely to have errors. Often, an estimate for the value of error is based on a reference value, such as the reference standard during an instrument's calibration, or the range or maximum value. This percent accuracy, also known as relative accuracy, or just relative error, is helpful for evaluating a measurement. Notice the absolute value of error is often used as the magnitude of errors is the primary concern. Errors cause a measured value to differ from its true value. We see this when we take repeated measurements of a variable and don't get the same results. Repetitions can be handled differently depending on what we're trying to learn. In our scenario, we independently sample two dozen bearings from a box and repeat the measurement of each diameter. Our aim is to understand variation in the entire box. We could also imagine measuring a single bearing repeatedly, say at different orientations around its perimeter, to understand its roundedness. Or we could measure the same bearing at different times of day or at different temperatures. We could even use different people or instruments to repeat a measurement. No matter the repetition method, if we observe different values of measurements, we classify these differences as errors. We conventionally classify errors into two main categories, systematic errors and random errors. If we plot measured values by measurement reading number, we can see that the systematic errors generally result in an offset from the true or known value, while the random errors scatter around the apparent measured average value. In our ball bearing measurements, an offset could be caused by a micrometer calibration error or even just oil or gunk on the micrometer head. Natural variation in a measurement without a known or controllable cause is generally considered random error. If there is a systematic cause of variation, it generally presents as a systematic offset that can be corrected. Because of this, we initially assume systematic errors are negligible. So then the average random error is zero and so we can assume that the best estimate of the true value is the mean value. Dart throwing is a useful illustration of error and accuracy concepts. The best case scenario in terms of accuracy and precision is when all of the darts hit the bullseye as evident in the middle. If, however, darts consistently hit the same spot just left of the target, as shown on the leftmost board, the thrower is precise and has high repeatability or low random error, but a systematic error is obvious. A good thrower might be able to correct aim and fix this systematic offset. When dart throws vary around the target as shown on the right, random error is higher, accuracy and precision are both low. This illustration is even more helpful when we consider on the right a target without a known true bullseye. Imagine the target turned over on the back of the wall. In this case, even with consistent throws, there's no absolute reference for performance. The old saying, you don't know what you don't know applies. But we can use statistical methods to estimate and analyze errors and measurement accuracy. As a fun aside, check out Mark Rober's video about a dartboard that corrects errors in every throw for a perfect bullseye. A big challenge with these measurement error concepts is that both the true value of a variable and the actual measurement errors are rarely known exactly. But based on available information, an operator may feel confident 
that the error is within certain bounds, a plus or minus range of the reading. This range estimate is the uncertainty. Uncertainty is a property of a test result. Uncertainty values are error estimates assigned to an instrument or a measurement. Formally, our goal is to estimate the true value of the variable x prime using the average observed values x bar and the uncertainty estimate range u calculated with probability p. Uncertainty analysis approximates errors using standard methodologies. Generally, we combine uncertainty of estimates of random and systematic errors, but here we mainly focus on how to estimate the uncertainty arising from the effects of random error or random uncertainty. As we previously discussed, a sampling of the variable under fixed or controlled conditions renders a sample, which is a finite set of data points. Intuitively, we expect that if the number of sample points is very small, the estimation of the true value x prime could be influenced significantly by any one data point. But with a larger data sample, the relative influence of any one point becomes smaller. As the number of points increases towards the population size, all variations of the measurand are included in the sample data set. So the more samples we take, the smaller our uncertainty becomes. But how specifically does that influence the uncertainty range and the probability? We need to better understand how data is distributed to confidently state uncertainty. We'll continue this discussion in the next module, looking more closely at distributions, probability, and measurement applications.